Lockout Relay or Master Trip Relay Lockout Relay is an electromechanical relay which latches its output contact. As the name suggests, this relay once operated locks out the circuit. Locking out means that circuit cannot be normalized until and unless this relay is reset. Lockout relays are nothing but a manual reset relays, which ensure the fault has been cleared or inspected correctly. Lockout relays are activating multiple contacts at the same time. Best example for lockout relay is synchronous TNC switch and motor trip relays 86M, 86H. An important type of accessory relay, especially for legacy electromechanical protective relays, is the so-called auxiliary or lockout relay, designated by the ANSI, IEEE number code 86. The purpose of an 86 relay is to serve as an intermediary element between one or more protective relays and one or more control devices, both expanding the number of control elements actuated by any one protective function and also providing a latching function which must be intentionally reset in order to resume normal operation of the system. These relay have two types of coils, operating and resetting coil. Operating coil when energizes, operates the relay. Resetting coil is energized to reset. This relay is not self-resettable, it requires manual resetting for normalizing the protection and trip circuit. The output contacts of lockout relay are wired to the breaker trip coil circuit. Therefore, whenever the relay gets energized, trip command to the breaker is issued. This relay is also known as master trip relay and its ANSI code is 86. It is provided with flag. The relay gets flagged on actuation. Lockout, lockout relays are not a fault sensing relays, they are normally connected to the fault sensing contacts current, voltage in both relays of the circuit breakers. If a fault should occur, the lockout relays ensure that all the critical circuits are isolated and would remain isolated so long as the fault is not cleared. There are two types of lockout relays. 1. Lockout relay with manual release to allow testing of the of the switching system. 2. Lockout relay without manual release. Testing of the switching system can be carried out by energizing the coil. Typically, lockout relays have two master trip relays, trip circuit supervision relays or three positions TNC switches. Let's take a master trip relay which contains two positions trip reset. Under normal condition, the handle would be turned to reset position and would remain mechanically latched at this position. The lockout relay contact LR which is in series with the lockout relay coil would be closed at the reset position only. The fault contact FC makes only when there is a fault in the circuit. Principle of lockout relay We know that relay is a protection device which senses an abnormal condition or fault in the system and issues tripping command to the circuit breaker to isolate the faulty part from the system. The decision for fault condition in the system is taken by the relay based on its setting. If the system parameter exceeds the setting value, relay assumes it as an abnormal fault condition. Suppose the current setting for an instantaneous overcurrent relay is 200% of the nominal value. If the relay senses that the circuit current is more than this setting then it will declare it as a faulty condition and will change its output contact RL from NO to NC. Thus the 220 VDC supply to the operating coil OC of master trip relay will be extended and hence it will be energized. As a modern intelligent electronic device, the protective relay is programmed and configured within a certain protection algorithm and settings. It has several bin binary input contacts and binary output contacts. So, it continuously collects each required updated status and electrical measured value, compares them to its preset protection setting values and updates each status of its binary output contacts to take several actions such as trip, close block, Initiate another protective function. Report to the substation event recorder, etc. Suppose that a protective relay has compared the current electrical values, it notices a fault. So, it decides to close one of its binary output contacts connected to the corresponding circuit breaker trip coil to be energized for a circuit breaker tripping procedure. Actually, this simple connection is not implemented. Instead, the relay output contact is closed, in such scenario, to energize the master trip relay coil. This master trip relay has its auxiliary normally open and normally closed contacts. So, we can use one of its normally open contacts to energize the CD trip coil tripping procedure.
we have two available master trip relay types. Lockout Relay ANSI Code 86 Tripping Relay ANSI Code 94 Question is why to use this master trip relay? A CB trip coil, especially for old CBs, draws a high electrical current. This means extra heat I superscript 2R. So, the directly series connected original relay normally open output contact is molten and remains in a closed position forever, after it is closed to energize the trip coil relay output contact damage. So, we use a master trip relay, such as a lockout relay, in between. As such a relay auxiliary contacts or heavy duty contacts, they can withstand the high electrical current drawn by the CB trip coil. So, our original protective relay normally open binary output contact is protected. We can, we can say that this previous reason is the old-fashioned reason. With improvements, the new CB's trip coils don't draw these high electrical currents. So, the original protective relay binary output contact can physically withstand the drawn electrical current. Traditional lockout-lockout relays are used by many utilities in electrical power transmission substations to trip and hold out of service a protection zone on the occurrence of a relay operation that requires inspection and or repair before the zone may be safely placed back in service. A protection zone could be a transformer, a bus, a transmission line or feeder, a static capacitor, or other power system element. A transformer zone lockout relay for instance is tripped by its current differential or gas protection, operations that strongly indicate the presence of transformer damage that would be aggravated by re-energizing the transformer. The current differential and gas protection is therefore connected to operate the lockout relay. The lockout relay contains a trip coil that typically unlatches a spring that mechanically forces the relay's contacts to change over. A normally open contact of the latching relay is included in each breaker trip circuit, disconnect open circuit, and each transfer trip send circuit required to trip the zone. A normally closed contact of the latching relay is included in each breaker close circuit and each disconnect close circuit to prevent the breaker disconnect from being closed by any electrical means. This is necessary as breaker trip circuits are set up such that they are disabled when the breaker is open, allowing the energization of the closed circuit to close the breaker. As soon as the breaker closes, the trip circuit will be re-enabled and the breaker will open, but by then the additional damage is done. The original intent of lockout was that on operation, maintenance or operating personnel would inspect and repair as required the locked out zone, and when clear, would reset the lockout allowing operators to place the element back in service. Resetting a lockout relay was by rotating the relay's pistol grip handle to change back the contacts and recharge the mechanical spring. However in recent decades, it has become normal to remotely control substations, resulting in the absence of on-site personnel to reset a lockout in an emergency situation, or where post-fault switching has separated the faulted element from the lockout zone. Thus many lockout relays are equipped with electrical reset facilities, which can be activated by the operators via SCADA systems. At least one utility is employing schemes that automatically reset the lockout 0.5 seconds after tripping, reducing the lockout relay's function to a simple zone trip auxiliary. Many utilities do not use lockouts at all, relying on operator administrative procedures or interlocks in the HMI computers to prevent an element from being re-energized inappropriately. Lockout core requirements and critical features The core requirements and critical features required of existing lockout schemes must be captured in any new design and are listed. These are restated in a somewhat simplified form here. 1. Zone-based lockout Each protective zone that implements lockout has its own lockout state, not combined with others. For example, if a transformer differential relay trips, it sets a lockout state for the breakers that isolate the transformer. If subsequent to, or as a result of the tripping operation, operation, one of the breakers fails, the breaker failure function sets the lockout state for the zone on both sides of the failed breaker so that the failed breaker and all the other breakers or transfer trip channels used to isolate it are tripped and locked out. 2. Local and remote indication Means are included for operators to determine which of these individual lockouts are in effect, so the cause can be checked and remedied for each. 3. Close inhibit A breaker cannot be closed as long as any lockout is still in effect, even if some lockouts applied to it have been reset. 4. Loss of protection system power 
momentary or sustained failure of the controlling relay or of power to any part of the system subsequent to tripping cannot possibly enable closing of a locked out breaker. In other words, even if some or all of the PNC system is de-energized, and then later re-energized, all the lockouts that were in effect are continuously maintained in effect. 5. Single Procedure Reset The resetting of a particular lockout has a single procedure all the affected breakers, channels, and other systems are reset as a group with respect to each zone lockout when that resetting procedure is executed. The operator does not have to find and reset the lockout at each of the many protection relays, breakers, or channels. Note that this list does not include maintaining the closure of the trip contacts. The state of the trip con contacts is irrelevant when the breaker is locked out, as the breaker auxiliary contact opens the trip circuit in any event. The construction of traditional lockout relays holds the trip contacts closed as an incidental consequence of their design. 6. Lockout Relay Lockout relays are typically panel-mounted devices equipped with handles for manual resetting. This photograph shows a lockout relay actuated by a breaker fault BF function, requiring manual intervention before the system may be returned to service. This lockout relay in the reset position, having been placed in that state by someone rotating the handle clockwise until it points vertically. When a remote signal energizes this lockout relay's trip coil, it moves by spring action into the trip position, the handle turning about 45 degrees counterclockwise and an orange target appearing just above the handle shaft. The lockout relay will remain in this tripped state until returned to its reset position by human intervention. Summary A lockout relay, also known as a master trip relay or an 86 relay, is an electromechanical relay that latches its output contact. Once operated, it locks out the circuit. This means that the circuit cannot be normalized until the relay is reset. Lockout relays are not self-resettable and require manual resetting to normalize the protection and trip circuit. They have two types of coils, an operating coil, which energizes to operate the relay, and a resetting coil, which is energized to reset the relay. The primary function of a lockout relay is to act as an intermediator between the protection relay and control points. It can operate as a hub of multiple protection relays trip commands and drive multiple subsequent contacts. This makes the relay a protagonist to execute simultaneous commands like breaker trips, interlocks, alarms, data display, SCADA extensions, and lockouts. For example, consider a scenario where a fault signal is initiated in a modern-day protection intelligent electronic device IED. This activates the lockout relay to perform the trip command of associated breakers. In the absence of a master trip relay, connecting individual trip circuits of each protection relay to circuit breaker trip coils would not only incur extra cost but also create a mess for operation and troubleshooting. In another example, if a high-pressure switch opens in an HVAC system, the lockout relay can keep the system off, even once that switch closes again. This ensures that the system remains off until the fault has been cleared or inspected correctly. Remember, the lockout relay is not self-resettable. It requires manual resetting for normalizing the protection circuit. This feature ensures that the faulty part of the system is isolated until the fault has been properly addressed.